Hi everybody, welcome to our weekly lesson. And this is Sami Abusad. I am Director of Education at T3 Live. I hope your week is going great. Hope you did, did well today. I am uh, doing a coaching session for the Strategic Day Trader Room members and uh, about to, to share with you our weekly lesson uh, that we do on, in these coaching sessions. Um, just a kind of a side note, I sure hope you were able to get the ABBV today, which we did in the room. It was a home run. I uh, hope you were able to catch that. Uh, it was a gap down at the open and just fell apart. Um, entry was at 70.50 this morning, so it was a really nice play. But back to our lesson series, last time we talked about, last week we talked about how to play pullbacks, okay? We talked about how when a stock, uh, we talked about the criteria for playing a pullback and what to look for, the three or more red bars, right? The three or more lower highs, and the optional item was the three or more lower lows. If you get that, then you, you, you have what we call a T3 buy setup. And then the entry would be above the red bars high with a stop under it. And then target would be the prior pivot high around somewhere in that area. And then after two green bars in your favor, that's the management. You start going bar by bar, meaning you put your stop under the last uh, bar that completed, right? Under the last bar. This bar completes, you go, you put your stop under it. Next bar completes, you put your stop under it until you get trailed out. Now that's basic management. There are other management techniques that you can, you, I use, right, that I, we teach. But this is basic management, and I think basic management works for 90% of the people, meaning it does the job be better than what most people do 90% of the time. Um, and then this is a real chart, not just an illustration, not a drawing. It's a real chart. So the entry would be over that doji bar is high, stop under it, target it at the prior pivot high. Okay. We said, uh, you know, I showed you some buy setups, right? That's the, you know, beautiful buy setup on AEO. So remember it, long stop, two green bars, but are already at target. And then bar by bar would have kept you in it, right? Uh, same here in an option. But what I did talk about is the, the big thing to understand is, is this. And that is you want to do buy setups. You want to do these pullbacks long if the only on stocks that are in an uptrend. Later on, we'll talk about how to play buy setups when the stock is in a sideways trend. But the truth is that's not easy. It's much easier to find a stock that's in an uptrend. What's the definition of an uptrend? We did that in a previous lesson. It's higher highs and higher lows, higher pivot highs, higher pivot lows. See how these pivot highs, pivot lows are, are cons uh, consecutively higher? The, the, the pivot lows, each one is, is higher than the previous one. That's the definition of an uptrend. So if you find a stock that has an uptrend with a rising 20 period moving average, then you want to look for that pullback. But if you don't have an uptrend, then you don't want to look for a pullback. Does that make sense? So make sure to, to understand that. Make sure you're on, on board with that concept. Okay, so that's a buy setup. We talked about that. And then the same with the sell setup. We have lower highs, lower lows. We want to short after three or more green bars in our favor. I mean, I'm sorry, against the trend. And then you want to short under. It doesn't have to be three. In this case, one, two, three, four green bars. And then it still hasn't didn't trigger, right? It still hadn't triggered yet. Yet Entry would be always under the, the last bar's low, okay? And then stop is above the pivot. You can use the entry bars high as a stop also, but that's cheating the stop. That's using a weaker stop. The, the correct place in general would be above the pivot. Okay, above that area where the sellers took back the control. Not here. Now, a, a bar is high, a bar is low. That's a reference point, so it shouldn't get negated. But again, in general, you want to put your stop right here, not here. And then after two bars in your favor, you, you know, you get the point. You lower your stop until you get to your target. Or you get trailed out. Okay? Or you get a bottoming sign. Now, I'm going to talk about how to play breakouts today. Let me ask you this. How many patterns do we have 
as technicians, how many patterns are actually available to us to take advantage of? In general, how many patterns do we have that are avail that the market makes available to us? You tell me. Two. Really two. No, it's not two, it's three. But mainly two. Stocks can correct correct three, uh, through uh, time by going sideways, in which case you play the breakout, or stocks can correct through price by pulling back, in which case you play the buy setup. That's it. They can correct by going sideways or they can correct by pulling back. There is a third pattern, but it's not very prevalent, is when the stock goes climactic. That's not a correction through time or price. It's a correction through exhaustion, exhaustion of the sellers. A good example of that, just want to show you this, jobs today. That was one hell of a climactic. Pardon my French. Okay? But it was too spready. See this? Big time sell off, shook everybody out. And rallied 10 bucks. But it, was, it had 80 cents spread. Otherwise, I was on the mic, loved it. Absolutely loved it. Wanted to do it like crazy. But, um, but again, was too spready. So. So this is a, the this is a an example of the third type of correction, which is climactics. Okay, but that's why I'm talking about here pullbacks and breakouts. We'll talk about climactics in future lessons, but those are the the two main patterns that are really available to us to to trade: pullbacks, which we covered last time, and breakouts. Now the thing about breakouts is here. Let's read. They, it can be a little confusing because we've learned because there's two there's two different types of breakouts. There are not not all breakouts are created equal. I don't know if you knew this or not. So basis can be a little confusing. So far we have learned of only two bases, consolidations or shelves. And these are stage one and stage three. We already talked about that in the very first few lessons. They are played similarly in that they they both assume that the base will hold as a trend. So we play the base by buying the bottom and shorting the top. Okay, but sometimes we are not in a sideways trend, we are in an uptrend and start to consolidate. So we assume it's stage three, but then price continues higher. That is common, actually most common. We call this the pause that refreshes, right? In other words, there are continuation bases and there are reversal bases. Reversal bases reverse the trend continuation basis continue the trend so the pause that refreshes is a continuation base a continuation type base we call this a pause that refreshes yes there are a couple of ways to distinguish a pause from a pause from a stage three and that's what we're going to look at now if it's a pause it is a pause therefore we do not want to play inside the base we want to play the breakout in the direction of the prior trend and in the next chapter we'll talk about how to play the, the stage one and, and three uh, breakouts. Let me give you a review, okay? But before I do that, because I already forgot, I was supposed to show you this at the, at the beginning. It's not too late. Just remember, whatever we talk about today is for educational purposes only, not to be construed as investment recommendation. All right? So that's the, disc the standard required disclaimer that I have to share with you. Okay, so let me give you a review. So this is the four stage cycle, the basic unit or the atom. And we said the uptrend is stage two, it's called stage through st stage two, the downtrend is called stage four. The sideways base here is called stage one. Sideways base at the top is called stage three. So when stage one breaks out into stage two, that is called the transition A breakout. And we already talked about how to play it in previous lessons. You might want to look at my Facebook or YouTube playlist for the, the last 13 lessons, basically. You, you can play the initial breakout, you can do the pullback, and you can do the secondary breakout. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Um, you know, this is the you, most of the time transition A plays, this is gold, right? HMY. Gold is hot right now. Most of the time, the transition A breakouts are are played for swing trading, not for day trading, for swing trading. 
So you get the, the stock that's in a downtrend, starts to go sideways, and then you get the curling moving average, and then bam, breakout, right? So downtrend, sideways, bam, breakout, okay? Most of the time, again, here's another one. Transition A type breakouts are used for swing and long-term trading, for investing, okay? Not for day trading. Transition C plays are the same. Most of the time, you're, they're used for swing trading. So you have a stock that's in an option, tops out. Now, did I know, where where did we know that this topped out? Did I know it had topped out here? No, I didn't. Did I know it topped out here? No. I knew it topped out when it gapped down here and started to base. And then the moving average now was above it and started to, to point down, to curl. That's when you know the stock topped out. Catching it at the top doesn't mean actually getting it at the absolute highest price. Only fools do that, meaning only liars catch stocks at the top, unless the stock goes climactic. Most of the time, trying to catch it at the top, you'll just lose money because it keeps going higher. But in this case, as you can see, we gap down, went sideways, move average flattened out, started to point down. That's when you try it short. Stop right here. Okay? So that's called a transition C breakdown. Transition C. Most of the time also transition C plays happen through a one, two, three. That's a one, two, three, four pattern. What's a one, two, three? One, igniting bar, and then narrow range bars, and then three, but in this case it had two in inside bars. So it's called a one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Just one bar. One, two, three. I'm telling you, I have no idea why this happens, but I know it does happen. Mostly just through a one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So that's called a transition C breakdown. However, today we're really going to more focus on the pause that refreshes, right? Again, it can be confusing at times determining whether a sideways price pattern is a topping stage three, topping stage three, which would eventually evolve into an ugly stage four, or just a pause or sideways consolidation in the context of a major stage two option. Oftentimes a stock will rest or work off steam by correcting sideways, not downward, meaning correcting through time, not through price. The sideways pause is a healthy occurrence as it helps prepare the stock for another extended run to the upside. But many novice traders do not know that don't know how to differentiate between a healthy pause and an unhealthy stage three, especially given the fact that they're both sideways. For example, that's a sideways pattern. It looked like it was going to go higher, right? But no, it was stage three. Sideways pattern looked like it was going to go higher, right? Turned out it was stage three. Same here. So sometimes it's tough to, it's hard. It really is hard to distinguish between a stage three and a pause. So in this lesson, I'm going to give you the characteristics for a pause versus a stage three top. A pause is usually narrow. So from left to right, no, yes, from left to right, it's usually a short base. It's not a very long base. For example, a stage a, a transition A, what slide are we on? Okay, 206. A stage one, uh, transition A is, look at the side, look at the base. Long bases, usually. Long bases, they're not short bases. Look at this, months, right? And I'm not, I didn't pick these on purpose. I'm just showing you that transition A breakouts are usually very long bases. Pauses are usually narrow from left to right. The stock doesn't last that long going sideways. Stage threes are wide. And if we look at stage three, look at this. Pretty wide, long bases, right? Does that make sense? Uh, so narrow from left to right. From top to bottom, Pauses have small bars, meaning it's thin. The base is thin from top to bottom. Inside the base, you mostly see narrow range bars. This was kind of a decent sized red bar right here. But look, this was a shakeout. What's a shakeout? It's a bar that breaks under the base and produces no follow through, meaning it shakes people out. It shakes out the weak hands. I can spend 10, 15 minutes just talking about this bar, explaining what it does to the chart and how much better as a breakout this became after just the narrow, after that shakeout bar or called money bar. So pauses are narrow, stage threes are wide. Pauses have small bars, stage threes have big bars. 
Positives have light volume, very light volume, except for that shakeout bar, which is a good thing to have big volume on the shakeout bar. It confirms that the sellers got out, got shaken out, in which case once the stock breaks out, there's no selling, not going to be any selling. So pauses have light volume or declining volume. If it's not light volume, at least the volume is tapering off like so. When that's the case, it makes it even better. That's called continuation volume. And pauses have a rising 20, and at the point of contact with the 20 is when they usually explode higher. Stage 3s have a flat 20. Does that make sense? Now, are there additional characteristics? Absolutely. For example, if the stock goes climactic, by going vertical, that's not sustainable. And go sideways, that usually leads to a breakout failure. So this basically becomes, be, this becomes stage three. So the preceding trend, it's important that it's not a climactic trend. So you don't want to see a huge bar here at the, at the last bar. You don't want it to be a huge bar. You don't want to have a huge volume bar either, which signals the exhaustion. Does that make sense? So you can add here, the preceding trend needs to be nice controlled trend not not a climactic trend uh, what else you don't want to have as I said the bars getting bigger and bigger preceding prior to that base because if they're getting bigger and bigger that's novice if you get also a big volume bar at the end that's novice if the stock happens to be bullish on the larger time frame, like a breakout, I mean a gap up, professional gap up, a breakout, then on the intraday charts, if you see a base, more likely that it's going to be a continuation base, not a reversal base. Okay? And so we can give you more characteristics for sure, but here's four. And add to it the trend, the preceding trend needs to be nice control and controlled, not climactic. Notice in an uptrend, tight base really tight base I mean you can get this wrong if you wanted to it's so easy a caveman can do it very tight bars low volume rising 20 reversal time what else do you want beautiful breakout okay this is called the pinch play when a stock goes bases under flat 200 and a rising 20 and it, it oscillates between the two eventually the 20 MA will come from underneath and pinches the stock, so to speak, above that 200. This is called the pinch play. Uh, it's a, it was a beautiful breakout, long stop, right? Notice the volume, you know, wasn't it was low volume, which means supposed to continue higher. Um, this is actually my favorite. Does anybody know why? Here's my favorite breakout pattern of all time. Not this particular one, but this is my favorite pattern of all, f favorite breakout pattern of all time, when the stock goes to the prior top and bases at the prior top, and this is exactly what we got here. In addition, we also got. Let me get rid of this or move it a little bit. We got a shakeout bar. You, do you see that shakeout bar? That's a shakeout bar. Here it is. Just want to move it out of the way so you can. We got a shakeout bar. So when the stock goes to the prior top, oops. When a stock goes to the prior top and bases at resistance, oh my God, that's my favorite breakout pattern of all time. Okay, uh, does anybody know what the name of this play is? Of course, it's a breakout, tight, small bars, rising twenty, low volume. But there's actually a name to it. This type of a breakout is actually a real good name to it, for it. Anybody? It is called the L D B O the late day breakout I am surprised you guys didn't know it it's called the late day breakout I could do a whole 30 minute lesson on just this breakout okay so basically what it is is in just a nutshell you have a stock that's really bullish you have a moving average that catches up well let's not draw here it is bullish stock pops goes sideways Movie average catches up. You're thinking, okay, I'm going to play it long. Looks good. Meets all the criteria that Sammy gave me. It looks, but it doesn't break out. Instead, it just goes sideways. Right? It goes just really, it flattens out. Movie average catches up, but doesn't, because it doesn't break out, it goes sideways. And then at some point, that moving average will start to curl. Why? Because the stock starts to put in these higher lows. Does that make sense? Once the moving average starts to curl, like so, usually at 2.30, there it is, 
then that's called a late day breakout. It is just a thing of beauty. It's just a thing of beauty. What can I say? Play the initial breakout and look at the buy setup here. Oh my God, gorgeous, long stop. Does that make sense? And then count the bars, count those bars to the promised land, to the profit land, right? This is called the late day breakout. As I said, I can do a 20, 30 minute lesson on just this how to spot it, how to play it, you know, things like that. But uh, for now, I, I trust that was good enough. What was the best thing about this pause? This was a pause that refreshes in an uptrend, right? The transition A breakouts come from a downtrend and then a sideways base and then a breakout. The pause comes from an uptrend. So this is already, what was the best thing, the single best thing about this breakout play? Anybody? Feel free if you're on YouTube or Facebook to type in the answers and I can check later. The best thing about this, my friends, was the railroad tracks. See those railroad tracks? When you have railroad tracks like this between the 20, the eight and the 20, or the 20 and the 40, then it's just, it's never gonna fail. I mean, of course, there's no such thing as never in trading, but it's almost as good as it gets. It just doesn't fail. Plays don't fail when they have railroad tracks like this. So that's what was good about it, the railroad tracks. And then same here to some extent, but what was particularly good about it is it was basing at the top. Remember I told you when a stock has resistance and then the stock goes right back up to it and bases at the top. Notice the equal highs and the higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, and finally explosion. Because it, it, it keeps, you know, more pressure, more pressure, more pressure, and then bam, breakout. In this case, it was too bullish to give you a, a, a pullback and then a long. It just went sideways again, offering a secondary breakout instead of a pullback. Does that make sense? What a beauty. This was a little different, but it's still beautiful because it went to the prior top and based there. Plus, it shook out. That's a shakeout. And then went back up and gave you a one, two, three, long. So this was good, but it's just, this is more... You know you have to more you have to be more experienced to see it okay these are easy to see again a caveman can do it now, those are easy to spot that's not as easy to spot okay but this was really good too the pause play with a shakeout and then how about the pause when the stock is in a downtrend do we have breakdowns oh yeah we have breakdowns same as breakouts people love to play breakouts not knowing that breakdowns are even more lucrative because breakdowns are driven by fear. Fear is a stronger emotion than greed. That's why I like to short more than play long. So short, stop, and then you can go bar by bar, but in this case, this was an hourly chart and the stock went climactic. Breakdown, right? Notice the declining 20. Beautiful. Uh, a breakdown, but then we got, you know, look at this base. Was that a continuation base? Aha, uh -huh. this was continuation right off the declining 20, not extended, small bars, low volume. Look at the bars here. These bars are the biggest. We said if the last bars are the biggest and you go sideways, be careful. That's usually a reversal. Not only that, but the base wasn't very neat. It was all over the place. Volume, when it started to break down, volume picked up. Moving average flattened out, far away from the 200, meaning extended a little bit. That's more of a reversal is not a continuation base so don't play it short especially if you have a flat 20 and the stock is very extended like this the last drop moved the stock far away from the 20 here and the 200 which indicates that the decline is nearly over the ensuing base may now yield actually a viable breakout versus another short opportunity but i don't recommend doing this one this transition a when you're day trading I like to do it mostly when you're sw only when swing trading. Same here. This is now down two days in a row at least, far from the 200. When the stock caught up, the moving average starts to go sideways. Uh, the moving average is now pointing up. When I say the moving average, I mean the 20 MA. Almost always, I, I'm referring to the 20 MA, which is the most important moving average in existence. Notice how it started to go flat. That's the sign that the stock was going to transition back up not lower so you don't want to short this does that make sense at any rate 
this was kind of a slightly longer lesson than I expected, but I hope you enjoyed it. This is the sort of education that we teach in the strategic day trader room. Um, and as you can see, it's really good stuff. It's based on objective data, not mumbo jumbo, based on how smart I am or based on how how awesome of a talker I am, right? No, it's based on objective price action. If you like it, you've never been part of the Strategic Day Trader Room, we have an incredible offer where you can join us for just 49 bucks for the first 30 days. Check it out. Just give it a try. Link is in the description. 30 days gets you in, I mean, 49 bucks gets you in for 30 days. You don't like it? No problem. You love it? then we would love to have you, okay? Again, link is in the description. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and we will talk again soon. Take care, everybody. Have a good night.